Hey guys, Medical Minis here. So, quick video. This is all about the acetylcholine effect on the body. Now, as you know, acetylcholine is a non-selective chemical. It can act on both your nicotinic and your muscarinic receptors. However, in this one, we will be mainly focusing on the muscarinic effect. Alright. Now, as you see, I've already written out everything you need to know. So, if you want, this is what you should screenshot and basically learn and just keep in your mind, all right? But I'm going to quickly go through everything so you have a good outline. So what you need to know about muscarinic receptors is that there are three of main importance. The first one, primarily found on your gastric parietal cells, number two, cardiac, number three, includes three, exocrine, smooth muscle, bladder, all right? Now, Generally, these receptors are primarily found in two spheres, CNS, PNS, CNS. You have your M1 to M5 receptors, which we're not really interested in, and you have your nicotinic. The main purpose of your nicotinic receptors <clears throat> in the brain is to combat, at least therapeutically, your Parkinsonian or Alzheimer's related symptoms all right so these are drugs you give on top of your dopamine uh, related drugs to combat these symptoms all right and in your pns of which we are mainly focused on today here you'll find your m1 to m5 but m1 to m3 is more important as for today and yeah you'll find your nicotinic receptors um, this can be somatic, as you will see later on, on your somatic nerves, and your autonomic ganglia, which you already know. Alright, cool. So let's just do a head-to-toe quick recap. So Jimmy over here, you can see, has his brain lighting up like the 4th of July. Why is that? Because Jimmy over here has taken some cholinergic drug. All right. Now, as I mentioned with nicotinic effect, we mainly do it because of those Parkinsonian um, and uh, Alzheimer's related symptoms. So we increase cognition and memory by introducing this. Next, the eyes. Look at it. It's been constricted. Pinpoint. What is it? Meiosis. Meiosis has the M3 receptor. What does it do? Contraction of the muscular layer, the circular, mus circular uh, muscle layer of the iris, all right, circular muscle layer iris, all right, now you can see all the secretions that are uh, being generated, one near the eyes, one near the mouth, what does that mean? Increase lacrimation, increase salivation. Like I mentioned before, your exocrine, exocrine glands, these are the uh, progenitor of these uh, secretions. Speaking more about secretions, you also have sweat secretion. Why? Because your sweat gland is an exocrine gland. So you have these three types of secretions. And... Let's move down the body, so the pulmonary tree, all right, what will, what will you see here? You will see bronchoconstriction. On top of bronchoconstriction, you'll also see pulmonary secretion increased mucus production in the bronchial tree. So basically, this is contraindicated in people with obstructive lung diseases such as asthma. All right, now you will also see the heart is sleeping, it has disease. Why? Because with the M2 receptors, you'll see that the function here is bradycardia and negative tropic effects. All right, disease of the heart. Next, if we go down, you'll see these electrical stimulation of the stomach. Now, this is because that Generally, GI function has been increased. There's a stimulation in the GI 
stomach, small, large intestine, so there's an increased peristalsis. However, the, you can see there's secretions coming on the stomach, which means that there is increased secretions, which means there's increased hydrochloric acid production. All right, so let's write that down. Increased HCL. Let's move down to the bladder. Bladder, you'll get an increase in urination. All right. So here on top of increased urination, you will also get an increase in defecation. All right. Diarrhea-like symptoms. Okay. Now, the reason we get increased urination is because there is a stimulation in the detrusor muscle, the smooth muscle of the bladder, and there's a relaxation of the sphincter. If we add these together, we will get increased urination. So this is primarily quite beneficial if, let's say, someone is suffering from, um, let's say, a benign prostatic hyperplasia and finally we missed out muscle so this is different this is not your um, autonomic nerve fiber this is your somatic nerve fiber and what does that mean somatic nerve fibers have nicotinic nicotinic receptors now the main purpose of this and yeah this is an alpha uh, nerve fiber by the way and the function of this is contraction of the skeletal muscle, all right? So you can see that there are two types of effects on muscle. There's a cardiac effect, cardiac and skeletal. Well, actually there's three, cardiac, skeletal and smooth, all right? With cardiac, there is a decreased um, decreased activity. Skeletal, there is increased contraction. And smooth, there is an increased contraction. However, this is, there is an exception to this if we're talking about vascular smooth muscle in which there is vasodilation. All right, so that is a quick recap. I wanna thank Jimmy for helping out over here. And yeah, if you enjoyed, please leave a like. And uh, yeah, I hope you found this useful and I'll see you on the next video.